You know, so we're, we're all looking at what's happening in Washington, but I've got to say, for those of us who have known Donald Trump for a long time and followed Donald Trump for a long time, to borrow from Star Wars lexicon, there's a disturbance in the force there. Like, he's he is shaken. I mean, here's, here's the front page of the Daily News uh, talking about poor Donald, and, of course, they're talking about him coming off the Forbes list. But we've always said, if you want to understand Donald Trump, and said this from the very beginning, just understand the money, the money. I still think a lot of these criminal investigations and the possibility of going to jail, too abstract for him. But him sitting there and possibility of losing his businesses, losing Trump Tower, having to pay $250 billion million that he doesn't have, I think that's getting to him. He, look, at, look at a clip of an attorney general in New York State that I think has just kind of had enough. This case was brought simply because it was a case where individuals have engaged in a pattern and practice of fraud. And I will not sit idly by and allow anyone to subvert the law. And lastly, I will not be bullied. And so Mr. Trump is no longer here. The Donald Trump show is over. I will not be bullied, Caddy K. The Donald Trump show is over. <laughs> well, let's see if the show is over. I have a feeling we've got another year and a half of this show to run, so we're only in kind of the intermission, perhaps. Yeah. Uh, but so far, the first half of the show hasn't been looking that great for him up there in the New York courtroom. He does, you know, he has that demeanor of somebody who's, who, who who's, keeps saying he doesn't want to be there, but clearly can't stay away. I mean, right. that's what's weird is he's, he's volunteering to be there, right? He doesn't have to be there yeah. in the courtroom every day. And yet he then complains that he'd much rather be out on the campaign trail. Not that he's done a ton of being out on the campaign trail, but he says, at the moment, I'd much rather be out on the campaign trail and be sitting here in this courtroom. It, He's, he's made the courtroom part of the campaign. His campaign manager is yeah. sitting right behind him in the courtroom. So this, he, he feels that this is a chance for him to appeal to his voters, as all of the others have been. Maybe this trial will be different, Joe. Maybe you're right. Maybe it is all about the money and being thrown off the Forbes 400 list will mm -hmm. matter to some of Trump's supporters. But so far, every time he's had a legal process like this, uh, the reaction from Trump's base and from some in the middle has been, look, the state is overreaching. Yeah. And, you know, Mar-a-Lago must be worth more it's than 18 million. It, it's, it's always been smoke and mirrors. I mean, his right. money has always been smoke and mirrors, moving things around. That's why he's always lied. It's why he's always exaggerated. Every banker in New York City knows that he lies and he exaggerates. Every person he's gone into business with for the past 30, 40 years say, you know, they regret going into business with him because he immediately starts lying. He doesn't pay his bills because he doesn't have the money to pay his bills. And he's facing the possibility of his business being shut down and, and his his tower being taken away and the possibility most frighteningly for him that he's going to have to pay $250 million. Does anybody here think that Donald Trump has $250 million of liquid assets to pay the court for a, a fine? Because if you do... <laughs> I need Radio to sit down. I need to. Sauce. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think it's like the, your point, I think, is Caddy is, I think, right that the political impact of this is likely to be almost nothing. And the psychic impact is huge. And I think that's your point is really that like, if, you, if you're a student of Trump as the man, you know, the, the character logical assessment, you know, New York means everything to him. You know, right. he, he didn't want to come. The Washington was never his aspiration. No. Right? His aspiration was always to be all of his buildings, his big buildings in Manhattan, or and having his showing name. people like Jamie right. Dimon and Who's Lloyd boss? Blank Fine right. and all of the masters of New York finance world who the real boss was. Or, and it's falling down in front of his eyes. Or at least that he belonged with them. You know, right. that grasping thing. I want to be in the club. I want to be in the establishment. I, I'm the. I want to be the king of New York. Whether I build these buildings or just slap my name on them, the New York th is central to the psyche, right? And right. I think what Tish James said is right. The Trump show is over in New York. I mean, this is this is a New York specific case, right? Where he's losing, whether it's money, the the visibility of the branding, all that stuff is in the hub, is in Manhattan, right? And that's been you know the you know his kind of eday fix since he was really young is how to be the king of Manhattan. King he's of Manhattan. no longer welcome. Really? He's an outer boroughs guy who, Willie, you know, wanted to be the king of Manhattan. He had his name on buildings all over Manhattan. As I said, every time I would drive out the Upper West Side heading up to my home in Connecticut, I would see seven buildings a row on the Upper West Side. Trump, 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 Trump. Every day. 
second he got elected president and he, he started offending 60 percent of Americans, one by one, his name started coming down off of those buildings. It started the decline as soon as he became president of the United States. You saw uh, 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 golf uh, uh, opens saying they weren't going to be going to, to his courses. Again, all the things that he valued. And now the possibility of losing his business in New York State, the possibility of Trump Towers being yanked from him, his Wall Street property being yanked from him. And again, uh, very likely that he's going to have to pay $250 million that nobody that I know that knows him thinks he has. Yeah, I mean, they physically a few years ago pried his name off of all of those buildings going up on the uh, Upper West Side, Lincoln Square over there. And now, though, this is something else because Trump Tower is the monument in his eyes to his success, that he made it in Manhattan, that he did. He came from an outer borough and made it in Manhattan. He's got the building with a name on it. It's on Fifth Avenue, has a view of Central Park. And you could see yesterday, and you've seen all this week, John, the fury some of it, of course, is performative. He's intimidating witnesses and the judge and the clerk and, and all of that. But he's really mad when he comes out in those, in those moments after when they get a break in the courtroom. And he did it yesterday. We'll play it in a second. He's raged. He, he was even asked about the Kevin McCarthy situation. Did you engineer this? No, I didn't. Now, this trial is a sham. It's a witch hunt, on and on and on. He knows. He feels something very important to him, central to who he is, slipping away in that courtroom. Yeah, this one case is not political, but it's very personal. Yeah. Uh, it, it's very clear. He's very angry the way, you, with the little bit of images we've seen inside the courtroom, he's glowering, or, and then he comes out every chance he can and yells at the reporters who are gathered out there. Now, he did leave. He won't be, he's back in Florida. He won't be there today. Um, but it, it goes to show how much this is central to his identity, that his Long before he entered in politics, he was about becoming this <clears throat> a ma a would be master of the universe in New York City. And he never quite achieved that. He was never really accepted by the elite in Manhattan. He was always looked down upon as the outer borough kid, and that fed an insecurity that, well, led to a lot of the, his career choices and entrance into politics later on. But this is something that it also imperils his fortune. And he, yes, he's not worth what he says. He probably doesn't have that money, but he's still obviously a rich man. And now, He's, that's going to change in some ways, and that he's not going to be able to have what he associates as success, which is which is money uh, and, 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 and the, the fame that comes along with it. And I think we are seeing here, at least for now, the attorney general is standing up to him, and this is a case that's going to drag on for months, but it's a problem. It's a problem. He's not going to be there today. We'll play more of what he said yesterday and get into where it's going from here. But